From a massive fishing trawler tossed around like a toy, to a merchant navy ship caught in a Force 10 storm, and a chemical tanker headed straight for an unbelievably large swell, here are 10 ships caught in monster waves. The North Sea is the 220,000 square mile body of water between Great Britain, the Netherlands, and Norway. It's been the center of geopolitical affairs since the rise of the Vikings, and rulers from every northern European country have sought control at one point or another. The North Sea also serves as Europe's primary fishery, with over 5% of all international fish caught in its waters. The fishing boats are built to withstand some monstrous waves, but sometimes the water gets a little too rough for comfort. In February of 2011, one crew learned how mighty the North Sea can be. We're looking at a fishing vessel named Lapwing PD-972, a 78-foot boat sailing under the UK flag. But the Lapwing looks more like a toy in a bathtub as the massive waves move it up and down. At one point, the nose of the ship pokes almost 45 degrees out of the water. Imagine trying to keep your footing on that thing. Right now, oil makes the world go round. But all that oil has to get from point A to point B somehow, and the best means of transportation are massive tankers traveling around the world. These ships are built to withstand the worst conditions Mother Nature has to offer to protect their assets. But in December of 2011, one of them nearly capsized when it encountered the full force of the ocean. The Sikham Padua, an oil tanker sailing off the coast of South Korea, gets caught in a string of tsunami-like waves. The worst place to get hit with a big wave is from the side, so the entire crew probably held their breath when one of those monsters approached off the starboard flank. The wave tips the vessel to a 40-degree angle, nearly capsizing it. Thankfully, she rides up and over the wave and crashes down on the other side. As of April of 2020, there were 810 Very Large Crude Carriers, or VLCCs. They carried about 1.86 billion metric tons of crude oil back and forth, and all that oil is worth a lot of money. Depending on the destination, it takes between four and six weeks to send a tanker from North America to Europe. Those ships must sail across the North Atlantic Ocean, where the waters can get pretty choppy during severe storms. In February of 2021, a chemical tanker was making the cross-continental journey when it got caught in a bad storm for more than three days. Waves tossed the ship around like a log on the river, and the captain did everything he could to keep the vessel from capsizing.
The waves get bigger as the chem tanker rides up and down. Water even splashes up to the bridge where the crew is filming. At one point, the camera zooms in on a monster headed for the ship. The tanker rides up and down before crashing clean through another wave, bringing visibility down to zero. Thankfully, the crew and captain weathered the multi-day storm and arrived safely at their destination. Though, we can't say for sure how seasick they all got. Commercial fishing isn't just a handful of people with fishing rods. Vessels pull a trawl or fishing net across the ocean floor to catch as many fish as possible. As such, these vessels are called fishing trawlers. Trawling dates back to the 17th century when the British developed special ships called doggers to fish in the North Sea. Of course, the waters were about as rough as they are now, so shipmakers built vessels to withstand the harsh North Sea conditions. Technology evolved, and today we have modern fishing trawlers that can withstand some incredibly rough water. In March of 2021, one of those ships, the Audacious, was tested off the coast of Scotland. You're not supposed to see the red part of the ship, so that should tell you how tall and powerful these waves really are. At times, the bow almost dips into the water as it falls down the side of the waves. And if going up and down wasn't bad enough, the rough waters even rock the boat from side to side. The Audacious was pretty familiar with unfriendly waves. In fact, it wrecked back in 2012 when the engine room flooded. The crew had to abandon ship via life rafts, and a helicopter quickly scooped them out of the water. Traveling on an open ocean comes with its own set of measurements. Nautical miles are equal to about 1.15 regular miles, and a knot equals about 1.15 miles per hour. Make sense? Good. These measurements are crucial when determining when it's safe and unsafe to set sail. It all leans on the Beaufort Scale, a system that rates the severity of wind out on the open ocean. It ranges from 0 to 12, with 0 meaning super calm and 12 meaning hurricane force winds. On August 16th of 2021, an oil tanker in the North Sea got to see what Storm Force 12 wind feels like. Winds blew between 70 and 80 knots as the tanker bowed up and down on the North Sea. It's certainly big enough to withstand the storm as long as it takes the waves head on. Then, our cameraman looks out the window and sees how badly the ship rocks from side to side. Countries will issue warnings depending on the Beaufort scale. In most cases, anything above a 6, meaning wind speeds upwards of 25 knots, results in a small vessel warning. Winds between 10 and 11 result in a storm warning, and 12 usually ends in a hurricane. In 1946, meteorologists added forces 13 through 17 to the Beaufort scale to account for tropical cyclones. Today, China is the only country that uses the extended scale. So, we're ready to forget 2020, right? Things couldn't have gotten worse between the pandemic, forest fires, and murder hornets. That is, until a record-setting hurricane season wanted its 15 minutes of fame. About 200 miles off the Louisiana coast in the Gulf of Mexico, an offshore supply vessel got caught in Hurricane Delta. 
a Category 4 hurricane with winds upward of 140 miles per hour. The ship rocked back and forth in the pitch blackness, and the only natural light came from the lightning striking all around them. There's nothing but wind and water rushing past the windows on the bridge. Thankfully, modern technology keeps the ship on course as Delta throws massive waves in their direction. You can hear the moment when lightning hits the boat and the alarms start going off. Apparently, the strike was powerful enough to damage two radios and their gyro compass. A gyro compass is a non-magnetic compass that points true north. True North and Magnetic North are two different things, and gyro compasses have become integral to merchant ship navigation. Even though their compass broke, our hurricane sailors safely made it to shore. When you think of a cruise, you probably picture tropical locations, poolside margaritas, and all-you-can-eat buffets. But cruise ships are still susceptible to massive waves. Just ask those aboard the MV Columbus in January of 2020. As the ship sailed across the Bay of Biscay, the body of water between France and Spain, it encountered some not-so-tropical weather. Known for its rough waters, the bay has claimed plenty of ships throughout history. This cruise ship wasn't the first, and it won't be the last. The static camera doesn't do this video much justice. Those are massive 20-foot waves they're sailing through, made even bigger by strong winds. Every time the Columbus crests over a wave, it lands with a huge splash, sending ocean water and foam as high as the bridge. The MV Columbus has been bought and sold several times since her maiden voyage in 1988. The COVID-19 pandemic pretty much grounded the Columbus for good, and a Greek ship owner named Marios Iliopoulos bought her at auction for $5.3 million. He sold it for scrap in 2021, with experts estimating its scrap value at $13.5 million. The Bay of Biscay isn't the best place to be in the wintertime. Severe weather is almost guaranteed as depressions enter from the west and head north towards the UK or southeast to the Mediterranean Sea. The storms bring constant rainfall to the area, and powerful wind can make sea travel rather dangerous. A Navy ship learned how rough the Bay of Biscay can be in March of 2009. The 12,000-ton ship got tossed around like driftwood in Storm Force 10 waves. Water floods the upper deck as the ship bobs up and down in the waves. 
Nothing is ever big enough to pose a threat, at least not to the naked eye. The captain does their best to take the waves head on, the most important thing you can do when navigating through rough waters. The crew made it out of the storm and to their destination, but upon inspecting their ship, they realized how much damage the storm did. In fact, had it been any worse, they could have been sunk at sea. Now, we don't know the extent of the damage, but we can assume it has to do with flooding below deck. Drake's Passage is the body of water between South America and Antarctica. It connects the South Pacific and South Atlantic Oceans and is considered the most treacherous voyage a ship can make. But somebody's got to do it, right? Well, what if we told you some people do it voluntarily? The MV Ushuaia is a cruise ship built in 1970 that specializes in expeditions to Antarctica. It's an ice-strengthened ship that accommodates 84 Antarctic enthusiasts in cozy cabins. But when Ushuaia heads through Drake's Passage, everyone on board gets the ride of their life. The crew clearly knows what to expect, as one person comments on how the next wave might be a good one, and he's right. The ship crashes into the ocean, and a massive wave reaches the bridge windows. Drake's passage is rough because it's the convergence point of three oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, and Southern, or Antarctic Ocean. There's also no landmass in sight to create resistance. Add some high winds into the mix, and you're looking at the worst place on Earth to take a cruise. Unless you're into that. Modern expedition ships are built to withstand rough waters with state-of-the-art stabilizers. Most passengers are okay with some crackers and a Dramamine. In 2015, a Russian ship traveling through Drake's Passage also got a chance to experience some of the most severe weather on Earth. The video unfortunately has no audio, but it's the images of the dimly lit sky and rough seas that show you all you need to know. Even with all the warning signs, people love braving the dangerous waters of Drake's Passage. So how many ships are currently sitting on the ocean floor? Well, according to one source, Drake's Passage has claimed over 20,000 seafaring lives and serves as the graveyard for more than 800 ships. 140 million cubic meters of water surge through the Drake every second. That's like 5,000 Amazon rivers flowing between Cape Horn and the Arctic Islands. Waves get as big as 40 feet in the open water. Though surprisingly, many journeys are incredibly calm. Some voyagers even mock the Drake, calling it Drake's Lake due to their ultra-calm experience. Perhaps crossing the Drake is pure luck. One day, it might be smooth sailing. The next, you're getting tossed around like a bath toy. The journey from Finland to Belgium would take 28 hours by car, about two and a half hours by plane, and about two weeks and a day on foot. You could also board a merchant ship from the port in Porvu, Finland, and sail across the Baltic Sea and through the Kattegat, the strait between Denmark and Sweden. Next, you'll turn into the North Sea, where you can expect to face some rough waters en route to Belgium. In October of 2013, a chemical tanker headed for Antwerp met some rough waters on the last leg of the journey. The chemical tanker lowers its engine power and braves the Storm Force 12 waves for almost two hours. It bobs up and down on the North Sea, and water crashes over the bow whenever a new wave approaches. 
While the waves weren't big enough to be considered monsters, they were strong enough to slow the vessel down to three knots, or as we've learned, about 3.5 miles per hour. Imagine getting stuck in those waters for two hours. Some people can't even last 45 seconds on an amusement park ride. Clearly, international ocean trade routes aren't designed for the faint of stomach. Let's leave navigating these waves to the professionals. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.